This is going to be, what if a Christian lives like the devil? Many times when you teach that salvation is by faith alone, without works, and teach that a person can't lose their salvation, you are oftentimes accused of teaching that a man can sin and do whatever he wants to do without consequence. This is what people of the Church of Christ or the Holiness churches or the Methodist or any church that says you can lose your salvation, they accuse a Baptist or someone who teaches eternal security. They accuse us of teaching that we believe we can do whatever we want to do. But this isn't true. And this isn't the case for the Apostle Paul either. If you look at Romans 3 and verse 8, it says, And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, Let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. So there was people accusing Paul of saying, Let us do evil that good may come. Uh, so they were accusing Paul of teaching, let's do whatever we want because good things are coming anyway. But Paul didn't teach this. He said in Romans 6, 1 through 2, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So we need to live right as Christians. And although we can't lose our salvation over sin in our life, there are still consequences for living like the devil. Uh, it's never okay to do, do wrong. It's never okay to sin. It's never okay to go against what the Bible says. And although we aren't saved by living a good life before or after salvation, it's still wrong to do wrong. But there are some things that a Christian can lose. He can't lose his salvation, but he can lose his inheritance. And this has nothing to do with salvation because we don't inherit salvation. It's a free gift. But if you look at 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So if a Christian commits the sins listed in these verses, then he isn't going to lose his salvation. He's just going to knock out some inheritance in the kingdom. And notice that verse 11 said, and such were some of you, but ye are washed. I'm born again, so my soul is spotless and sinless in the eyes of God, but my flesh is still vile and still sinful. I could be living as a idolater or a fornicator in my flesh, but when God looks at me spiritually, He sees me as perfect as Jesus Christ. If I am living like a fornicator, then that is my flesh, which isn't born again, and is still going to commit sin. And that is standing versus state. Your standing is, you are completely righteous in Christ, and saved and sealed into the day of redemption. Your state is however you are living at a certain time. And if the state of a Christian is a life of fornication, then he knocks out his inheritance in the kingdom. He is not going to rule and reign like he would have if he had lived in holy life while he was here. He will still go in the kingdom, but he won't rule. And he isn't going to go into outer darkness as some may teach. But there are Christians who live for satisfying the flesh. They don't care about God, the Bible, or the work of the Lord. Their main concern is self, and they aren't suffering with Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 2.12 says if we suffer... We shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. And not every saint from the church age is going to reign with Jesus Christ because they aren't suffering for him. And you can suffer by doing things like enduring temptation. 
You need to endure every temptation the devil throws your way. And giving in to sin has consequences in the kingdom. But not only can a Christian lose his inheritance through living like the devil, a Christian who lives like the devil affects others that are close to him. Romans 14, 7 says, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. Meaning the things you do and how you live affect others. You, do you want to be a stumbling block to a lost friend or a family member? And you ruin your testimony when you continuously sin in front of a lost friend or family member. Uh, why would someone want what you have when you act just like they act? If you act just like the sinful world and tell others that you're a Christian, that's not being a good testimony, and that is giving sinners occasion to blaspheme. And a lot of professed Christians at work will cuss just like the lost world, tell dirty jokes like the lost world, fornicate like the lost world, and to the world they are just like they are. Uh, you also affect your kids. The Bible says train up a child in the way he should go. If you're watching filth on TV and playing wicked video games and doing sinful things in front of your kid, then you are leading them down the road of destruction. Sometimes Christians are as close to a Bible as a lost man will ever get. And they may never read the book, but they read you. And lost people watch you and examine your every move, looking for some unrighteousness so that they will feel better about their own sin. And your sin affects others, even secret sins behind closed doors. A man who watches porn won't have as good of a marriage as a man who doesn't. It affects how he sees his wife and how he treats his wife. And number three, if a Christian lives like the devil, it makes it harder for other Christians. There are some pastors and teachers who are carnal and walk in the flesh. They don't even realize that they are living a carnal life. They prepare messages and sermons and their whole ministry is powered by envy and by strife. And Paul calls envy a work of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5. Uh, that's something a Christian can commit because he still has flesh. And a Christian who preaches with envy and strife and contention is led by unclean spirits. He hurts other Christians. Uh, Philippians 1, 15 and 16 says, Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Paul was imprisoned, and the ones preaching Christ with envy and strife were just making it harder for him while he was on the inside. Uh, when a Christian sins openly to the public, it makes it harder for other Christians to witness. When a Christian sins, another Christian who looked up to them may say, well, he does it and he's a great Christian, so I can do the same thing and maybe I can get by. And a Christian who lives like the devil will reap what he sows. Galatians 6, 7 through 8 says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So if you sow pornography, you will reap busted up marriages. If you sow drugs and alcohol, you will reap imprisonment and rehabs and homelessness and other things that a druggie goes through. If you sow wasting time on video games and worldly junk, then you will reap regret and lack of wisdom at a late age in life. Uh, don't you want to read the Bible and understand the Bible and get close to God through Bible reading and prayer and spend your time doing that? That way, when you're old, then you have wisdom and something that you've learned to pass down to someone else. All the time wasted on a video game or watching DVDs is not really something you can pass down to someone else. It's just wasted time. But everything you do in the flesh affects your future in the flesh. And not counting having a loss of rewards at the judgment seat of Christ if you're not using your time wisely. Or if the things that you're doing that are good are done in the wrong motive. You can do things that are good and get the glory for them yourself. Or you can be doing things for other people that aren't for God. It's just to please someone else. The motive has to be about pleasing God. 
and you are going to pay in the flesh for doing things like smoking cigarettes, watching soap operas, playing the lottery, listening to country music, uh, wearing clothes that are immodest, that show your nakedness. The Bible says when you uncover the thigh and make, make it bare, that, that's your nakedness. If you're wearing clothes that show the, your thighs off, that's a sin. Uh, it's a sin to watch uh, wrestling. The filthy things they have on the Smackdown and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a sin to go to the movies and watch rated R movies. It's a sin to watch certain TV shows with cussing and violence and drug use and fornication. There's a lot of things that are a sin that we're going to pay for in the flesh. There's Maybe you're listening to bad music that you shouldn't be listening to with cussing or a, a wicked beat or stuff that talks about fornication. Uh, you're going to reap what you sow by doing sinful things. And although we, our flesh desires these things and wants to do these things, the Bible teaches against them. And we should try our best not to do them. Uh, a wife will, not, will pay for not taking care of her kids because she just wants to hang out with her friends and go out and have fun. She's going to pay. Uh, someone said the other day that if you spoil your kids, then you'll have to raise your grandkids. If you raise your kids, then you can spoil your, gran spoil your grandkids. You know, if you don't raise your kid right, then you're gonna, they're going to grow up and have kids and you're going to be raising their kids. Uh, Jesus always said, go and sin no more. Uh, the Apostle Paul preached holy living. There's nothing in the Bible that says a Christian can sin or that he should sin. Uh, there's nothing in the Bible that would teach that we can just go and do whatever we want without consequence or that gives any hint that something like that's okay. Just because you can't lose your salvation doesn't mean you should go and sow your wild oats, as they say, because you will reap it. A Christian who lives like the devil will die early. Romans 8.13 says, For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. The Bible talks about a sin and a death. And in the doctrinal sense, that probably has to do with someone in the time of Jacob's trouble who takes the mark of the beast. But we can also get spiritual application and we can, and apply, we can apply that to a Christian who sins until it kills him. Paul talks about a saved man being turned over to Satan for the, the destruction of the flesh. Uh, the man got right, so he ended up not dying. But if a Christian continues in unconfessed sin, not even trying to live right, then God is going to take his life. Pretty much any bad thing you do leads to death anyway. Uh, it's a sin to smoke cigarettes. There's good Christians who smoke. Uh, but what, is, what does that do to you? It leads you to an early death. It's a sin to fornicate. And something like that may be pleasurable. But if you fornicate, then you'll end up with a disease, an STD. Uh, alcohol messes up your body. That's pleasurable to some people to drink alcohol, even some Christians. But alcohol ruins your body. It ruins uh, many things. It leads to early death. Drugs lead to early death. They put you in situations of violence. They can lead to imprisonment. Uh, there's, why do you want to do things that's just going to leave you down a path of sorrow and depression anyway. The Bible says in Psalms 55, 23, But thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days, but I will trust in thee. So bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. So why do you think the rock stars seem to die at such a young age? It is because of a hard life of sin. The way of transgressors is hard. Have you ever heard of the 27 Club? 
men like Kurt Cobain and Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin, Jim Morrison, Amy Winehouse, they all died at age 27, at a young age, because they were living a life of sin. And it seems like there is something to that age. Uh, I know a lot of preachers who got saved or got right around the age of 27. Peter Ruckman got saved at 27. I believe Charles Lawson, my pastor Donnie Dalton, got saved at 27. There's something about that age 27. Uh, you need to start serving God while you're young. The Bible says bloody and deceitful men won't live out half their days. There are ex exceptions. There are some men who live to be over a hundred, like that one guy, George Burns or whatever his name is, or people that live to be really old, like Hugh Hefner, who died recently, that lived a very wicked life. But those are the exceptions. But it seems like every couple of years, a lead singer of a rock band dies or commits suicide. Just like in the past year, the lead singer of the band Lincoln Park died at a young age. The lead singer of Soundgarden died at a young age. And if a Christian lives like a lost person, if a Christian lives like the devil, then he is going to have a miserable, miserable time. He's going to have a miserable life. And he is going to leave out of this life early, most likely. The way of the transgressor is hard. And when a Christian acts like a transgressor, it's even harder on him than it would be a lost person acting that way. Because you have a spiritual battle going on inside of you. You got the Holy Spirit wanting to go one way. Then you got the flesh and the world and the devil wanting you to go the other way. So you're in a battle anyway. And then when you just give in to the flesh, you're going to reap all those things. And it's just going to lead to a miserable, miserable life. But if you're not saved, then you shouldn't be worried about getting victory over sin. Because you can't do it without getting saved. Paul tells us what the gospel is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the apostle Paul said, Christ died for our sins. You can't even give the gospel out without mentioning the word sin. So all of these false teachers saying not to say the word sin and just talk about grace and love, they're being false prophets, false teachers. Uh, they're just in it for the money because you can't say the gospel without mentioning the word sin. Christ died for sins. You need to know you're a sinner. Uh, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Christ died for sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day. And he did that for you. He took your sins and he paid for them on the cross. And you have to accept the payment. If you don't accept the payment, if you reject it, then you're going to die and go to hell because you still have that sin applied to your record. If you want the sin off of your record, then you need to come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and put your faith and your trust on him and what he did on the cross to be your payment for sin. And then the moment you do this, God takes away your sinful record and gives you the spotless record of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Romans ten thirteen, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says in Acts sixteen thirty one, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The moment you come to Jesus Christ and tell him you want to be saved, you're saved and, and you're eternally secure. And you, you can't get to heaven by your works. Romans 4, 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved by faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And what I mean by being not saved by works means you can't get to heaven by living a good life and doing good deeds. It's all about what Jesus Christ did. He did all the work on the cross, and he's the only one that could do the work. 
You just have to believe on Him. But a Christian shouldn't live like the devil. If you're saved, then you need to live right because you love God and because you want to do what the Bible says. But I hope this has encouraged you to get rid of a sin out of your life, come to God in confession. If, we're, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, as the Bible says in 1 John. And if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. As the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, it's very necessary to stay in fellowship with God and confess our sins to Him daily. And if we do this, then we're going to have a lot better Christian life. We're going to have a lot better testimony. We're going to have a lot better rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to have more of an inheritance. We're going to have, we're going to be affecting others better around us, leading our kids better, leading our families better. And just being better overall. But this has been, what if a Christian lives like the devil?